Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malzberg. Russia has extraordinary influence over these separatists. No one denies that. Russia has urged, urged them on. Russia has trained them. We know that Russia has armed them with military equipment and weapons, including anti-aircraft weapons. Key separatist leaders are Russian citizens. So given its direct influence over the separatists, Russia and President Putin in particular has direct responsibility to compel them to cooperate with the investigation. That is the least that they can do. All right, folks, the president uh, earlier today uh, sounding very angry, and uh, I don't know what that translates to in Putin land, but one man who could help us decipher that and maybe translate a bit is Con Coughlin, defense editor for the Daily Telegraph, a 25-year veteran war correspondent, uh, and also has a great book, Churchill's First War, Young Winston at War with the Afghans. Hello, Khan. How are you, sir? Hi. Great to be with you. Well, thank you for joining us. Okay, so uh, Obama today, um, you know, saying Russia has to step up. Russia could stop this. Russia could make this better. Russia could uh, get the bodies to where they belong. And, uh, of course, talking about Putin uh, when he says Russia. Uh, is this enough? Um, well, certainly the president is 100% is, uh, correct on you know, what the Russians can do to resolve all this. Uh, you know, Russia created this mess, and Russia has to end this mess. Uh, that's the bottom line. Um, and I think I, I'm personally very pleased to see the president talking tough on this, because um, far too often we in Britain think the president has run away from these sort of global crises. But on this occasion, he's come up to the plate and he's saying in no uncertain terms that Mr. Putin needs to get his act together or else face the consequences. Ah, that's the key. Uh, the consequences here to four, based on everything uh, that has taken place with Russia and Ukraine, uh, some might argue have been very limited in scope. Certainly yeah. they're, they're targeted in scope, even though, and I'm talking about the sanctions. He did threaten more world isolation today, but didn't go any further in, in, uh, in being definitive about what that would mean. And when you look at the poor record that the Europeans have had in in, in isolating uh, Putin, and they do most of the business with Russia compared to us. Uh, and you wrote a great piece, how to deal with uh, a pathological lying killer, Vladimir Putin. So Putin's at home watching this, and what is he, smiling, laughing, having another, uh, another drink, or what? Well, I think he was until the Malaysian airline uh, plane crashed out of the skies. I mean, I think that's precisely where he was, and I think that's a very apt description of where the Europeans were. I think a lot of European countries, particularly Italy, France, and Germany, which have some significant trading ties uh, with Russia, and particularly Germany, which is dependent on Russia for a lot of its energy needs, these countries are very reluctant to confront uh, Mr. Putin, and I think it was causing a lot of irritation in Washington, actually. I've been talking to some Obama administration officials, and they are rather um, uh, disaffected with, with the way the Europeans have been handling this. But as I say, the, this crash, this, uh, this terrible atrocity has been a game changer. And even the, the reluctant Europeans now realize that we've got to do something. We, and uh, and this, you know, this, this time, you know, it, is, it is serious. And, and I'm, you know, I, I would just point out to your listeners that the reason the Soviet Union collapsed 30 years ago is it went bankrupt. And it is entirely feasible for a, for a one-trick pony economy like Russia, which is totally dependent on its energy. If we get the sanctions right, as we did, in fact, on Iran, you can bring a government to its knees. I mean, the reason the Iranians changed their government was they couldn't live with the sanctions anymore. And, you know, if everybody that comes together and says to Putin, enough is enough, you know, you either, you either resolve this and stop supporting rebels that shoot down Western airplanes, um, or you face the consequences, and, and your economy will go bankrupt, and you'll be out of power. So that, 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 this is what's at stake. It's, it's pretty serious stuff. That's going forward, but do you see uh, Putin, uh, you know, stepping up to the plate here? Do you see Putin in the next couple of days, and that's what it would have to be to make a difference, saying, I'm going to get those bodies to where they belong. Here are the black boxes, which we believe he has. Uh, you know, yes, you, those tapes are accurate. The missile launcher was taken across the border. Here's the one that launched the rocket. I mean, there's no way on the face of the earth that he's going to do all those things in the next few days, is he? 
No, I mean, I, I entirely, I entirely agree with you. Um, yeah, this is just not in his psyche. What, what he, what he wants to do at the moment, and what, and his policy will continue to be, is to try and cover up any evidence that suggests Russian involvement in this terrible um, disaster. So, you know, there, there are reports today that he's removing bodies. Um, the missile launchers have been returned to Moscow, and you know, with, with, with the usual chutzpah, he's just sort of blaming everybody else. It's the Ukrainian government, it's the West, it's the EU, it's NATO. Everybody's to blame, but Vladimir Putin. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's usually the way it is. All right, let's move uh, to uh, Israel and uh, the war with Hamas. Uh, the John. Kerry
missiles in the, in the centres of civilian population, making it very difficult for the Israeli military to to conduct surgical strikes to destroy the missiles without without killing civilians. But you, know, you, you can't just sit there and let people fire rockets at you. I mean, nobody nobody in their right minds would tolerate that. You know, that Con, I, I know you can't see this, but guys, uh, Adam, do we have the video uh, that we could put up, the one U.S.? Okay, this is where we're going to show a video now, uh, which is reportedly, and it, it seems very obvious, uh, it's an Israeli Defense Forces video where they're talking amongst themselves, and they, they you see uh, on, on the roof of a, uh, uh, the balcony of a, uh, looks like a re residential house, um, they're firing rockets from that house. And uh, that's what Israel talks about. That's what, uh, you know, the Netanyahu talks about. That's what Marco Rubio talked about. That's what even Chuck Schumer talks about. Uh, but, you know, but the, the, when the president speaks, when Kerry speaks, when the State Department speaks, there's always, uh, you could roll it whenever you get it, there's always a but. You know, after yeah, uh, no, 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 it's, it's rather predictable uh, and unnecessary. But I suppose, I mean, I suppose what what Kerry's thinking of is all the Islamist militants all around the Middle East, um, and he wants to try and try and sort of make sure they don't get too antagonised. So, uh, you know, that, that I imagine that's where he's coming from. But yeah, you know, the bottom line is, as I said before, you know. When, when you're dealing with an enemy like this, and we've seen it happen so often in the past, Saddam Hussein used to use the same tactic in Iraq uh, of human shields. Uh, it's despicable. It's not the way that anybody in the West would conduct a military uh, operation, but it, it is the way they conduct theirs, and it makes life very difficult for, for the Israelis when they try and defend their own citizens. And I got one more for you, Khan. Uh, yesterday we yeah. heard for most of the day that Hamas had... Uh, kidnapped an Israeli soldier, they had his name, they had his, uh, in effect, his serial number. Um, there were, we get reports that uh, the Palestinian Authority and Fatah were handing out candy to kids. There were celebrations in the streets that they kidnapped yeah. an Israeli soldier. And then the Israeli ambassador said, no, they didn't. And that's it. The story kind of like went away. I, I, you know, and it, I'm just saying, if you went to bed last night before they denied it at around 9 p.m. Eastern, and you woke up this morning, you wonder, where, where's that Israeli uh, soldier? The media is no longer even talking about it. And it's, it's a very weird one. But I think, again, you know, the, the moral bankruptcy of, of the Palestinians when, you know, they behave in this way. Somebody gets kidnapped and you hand out sweets to the kids to celebrate. I mean, is this really the way, the way you want to bring up children? I don't know. It yeah. just seems very, very bizarre to me. Khan, thank you very much for joining us today, sir. I appreciate it. Pleasure. And again, the book, folks, Churchill's First War, Young Winston at War with the Afghans. Khan, uh, Khan Coughlin, uh, defense editor for the Daily Telegraph uh, here on the Steve Molesberg Show. Uh, just crazy, as, we, as we've discussed. Um, it was very disheartening uh, to be at the Yankee game yesterday and to see the, uh, the bulletins coming across of 13 Israeli soldiers killed and then the, the report that Hamas had kidnapped, uh, according to Hamas, a, an Israeli soldier. And you know in the past, uh, Israel's given up over 1,000 prisoners to get one soldier back and the celebrations and the candy, like I said, and everything else. And then it was a lie. It was a lie, and the media just stopped reporting it. But they've been, if that was a lie, if Hamas does that, how many other lies do they tell about what evil Israel is doing? Wake up, media. Please wake up. Coming up next, give me five right here on the Steve Malsberg Show.